The ILS is the most commonly used type of instrument approach in the world, and you'll be expected to fly them down to minimums throughout your EASA or UK instrument rating. So today, I'll show you how. In the last video, we looked at how to brief an instrument approach using the ILS for runway 10 right at Aarhus in Denmark. So we'll use the same approach to show you how to breeze through what is arguably the hardest part of your instrument rating test. Whenever you're flying any instrument approach, there are two key points to remember. Firstly, whenever you need to make a correction, you must only correct either the lateral part or the vertical part. So in the case of the ILS, you'll only make a correction to either the localizer or the glide slope. Never try to correct both at the same time, otherwise you'll probably lose track of everything and end up needing to go around. Secondly, the corrections that you do make must be very, very small. You only ever want to change your pitch attitude by one or two degrees at a time, and you only ever want to change your heading by a maximum of five degrees. The heading bug makes your life quite easy here, because the heading bug is 10 degrees wide, which means the edge of the heading bug is five degrees left or right of where you've set it. So when you want to turn left or right to make a correction to the localizer, you can simply turn onto the edge of the heading bug and you'll be flying a nice, gentle, five degree correction. Okay, so jumping into the cockpit and I'm being radar vectored for the ILS runway 10 right. I'm on a heading of 170 degrees and I'm already at the platform altitude of 2000 feet. Looking at the GPS, I can see clearly that I'm on a base leg and I'm expecting to maintain this heading for another mile or so then be given a small left turn to intercept the localizer. So ATC come on the radio and say, Delta Delta Sierra done left heading 130 degrees, cleared ILS runway 10 right, report established. Turn left heading 130 degrees, cleared ILS runway 10 right, Wilco, Delta Delta Sierra. Okay, so that's my intercept heading 130 degrees, and I'll fly straight and level on this heading at 100 knots, waiting for the localizer to come alive. The localizer is alive, so that's my prompt to set the heading bug to a heading that I expect will maintain the localizer. I'm expecting about a 15 knot crosswind from the left on final, so I'll put the heading bug about 7 degrees left of the needle to compensate for the crosswind, and I'll turn onto my heading bug. I can see I'm slightly left of the localizer, so I'll just make a very small right turn, only a couple of degrees, to get that localizer to move towards centered. Remember that whenever you're making these small changes, you need to be looking at the attitude and just glancing down to check your heading. Localizer centered now, so I'll make a small left turn back onto my heading bug and maintain straight and level. Now that I'm established on the localizer, I'll set my altitude bug for the missed approach. The missed approach procedure has me climbed to 2000 feet and the altitude bug is already set to 2000 feet. I'll also glance over at my ground speed, which is showing about 95 knots. Cross-referencing the approach plate, I can see that means I'm going to need a descent rate of about 450 feet per minute. Now I'll just carry on straight and level, waiting for the glide slope to come alive. I've gotten 150 feet low, so I need to make a positive pitch up and maintain a higher pitch attitude to promptly get myself back to 2000 feet. Now as best as I can, I really want to settle the aircraft down at the right altitude, the right airspeed, and tracking the localizer nicely for this last mile or two before I start my final descent. The glide slope's alive, and I'll wait until it becomes centered, then, just like any other descent, I'll reduce the power and pitch down. In this aircraft, I know I'm going to initially target 1 degree pitch down and 25% power with flap 0 to give me a 100 knot descent at about 450 feet per minute. Okay, the glide slope's centered, so I'll reduce the power and pitch down. Just like every other change we make in instrument flying, the most important thing is to get the correct power setting and pitch attitude set, let the aircraft stabilize and trim before moving into the instrument scan. So right now, I'm focusing on nothing other than the power setting and the attitude. 
Now the aircraft is stable and trimmed, I'll go into the instrument scan for an approach. The scan for all approaches gets broken down into the lateral and vertical components. As always, the attitude is the master instrument. From the attitude, I'll look down at the lateral information, so that includes my heading, am I flying my heading bug setting, the track diamond, is the track diamond on the head of the needle, which tells me whether my heading bug is set correctly, and the localizer. Is the localizer centered, or do I need to make a correction? I can see the localizer has come to the left slightly, so I need to make a small left turn to correct that. Looking back up at the attitude, I'll roll left, only to about 5 degrees of bank. While I make this turn, it's very important that I don't pitch up or down at all. The pitch is what's keeping me on the glide slope while I'm looking at the localizer and making this left turn. If I let the pitch move up or down at all, the glide slope will start to move away from centered while I'm not looking at it. I've turned onto the left hand edge of the heading bug and that's all I need to correct the localizer. Remember that any corrections need to be very small and you need to give them time to work. The key here is patience. From the attitude, I'll look across to the vertical information, which is the glide slope and the altimeter. I can see from the glide slope that I've gotten a little bit low, so the pitch attitude that I've been using hasn't quite been working. To correct this, I'll pitch to one degree nose up and trim while making sure that the wings stay level. Maintaining this new pitch attitude, I'll simply continue with the scan along the approach, making small changes to the heading and pitch as needed. A thousand foot above the threshold and my approach is stable. If it wasn't, I would go around. For every three cycles of this scan, you need to glance over at the airspeed. Just because the power was set correctly at the start of the descent, doesn't mean the airspeed will take care of itself. However, keep in mind that the airspeed will change with every small pitch change that you make, so don't be overly eager to change the power just because the airspeed is 5 knots off your target. Instead, you need to consider why the airspeed has changed. For example, I can see here the airspeed has increased to about 107 knots, but that's because I'm high on the approach and I've pitched down to get back onto the glide slope. I'm better off leaving the power where it is, because once I'm back on the glide slope, I'll need to pitch up again to follow it, and that will cause my airspeed to decrease back towards my target of 100 knots. So always consider the trend in your airspeed, and only make a power change when you are consistently 5 knots or more off your target airspeed. Approaching my minima of 281 feet, I can see the runway ahead and I'll continue. So this wasn't the best flown ILS in the world, and there were times I was left, right, high and low. Now at minima, I'm a little low and right of centerline, but the approach was within limits, it was stable, and I can manoeuvre to land visually from here. This is all fairly typical of an instrument rating student, and you'll find yourself quickly improving with practice. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe as it really helps us to reach more people. This video is a sample taken from our instrument rating preparation course for EASA and UK student pilots. If you want to know more about our course, you can check it out on clearflight.co.uk.